Right now at 5.30, two families are without a home this morning after an early fire this morning destroyed a Lexington duplex. We'll tell you what sparked it. Uh, this is not good. I'd better get out of the way. One man describes the terrifying scene as a storm ripped through parts of Anderson County yesterday. We'll show you more of the damage. Yeah, not only do we have more storms on the way, but heavier rain on the way in the next couple of days. Flash flood watch in effect throughout Saturday night. I'll show you what that means for us and when we can expect this to move on in. Coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good morning and welcome into you. I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope your Friday is off to a great start. Looks like a wet weekend is ahead, but with a look at what's happening for today, let's go over to Micah. Yeah, that's what it looks like out there, Rebecca. We're going to be seeing some of those showers early this morning. It's not much. It looks widespread, but remember, a lot of this isn't even reaching the ground. So you're getting a few sprinkles, a couple light showers. We did have one lone thunderstorm that's now since faded away down in southeastern Kentucky. All eyes are back toward the west. This is where your heaviest rain will come from. And it's sliding eastbound as we speak. The center of the low or the tropical depression is sitting right there over Arkansas, sliding in our neck of the woods. We'll see it overnight and into tomorrow morning. That's when the bulk of it moves on in. Today, 83 degrees, more storms in the forecast, but all eyes on the heavy rain potential. How much are we expecting? And like I said, the timing on this, when it moves in, when it moves out, that is crucial for your events. I'll show you that in just a few minutes. Well, more storms are headed our way this morning, just as Micah said right there. But some communities are still reeling from damage caused by yesterday's storms. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is at our live desk with a look at the damage in Jessamine County. Good morning, Rebecca. That storm ripped through Jessamine County, bending awnings, knocking down trees, and damaging a youth football facility. The speedway on Main Street in Nicholasville sustained some damage when strong winds bent part of the awning over the gas pumps. Then in a nearby neighborhood, some trees fell onto people's property, causing a big mess and knocking out power in that area. Those living there say the storm was loud and did not last long. They say when they looked outside, there were limbs and pieces of trees all over the yards. Now, a GoFundMe page has been set up to help the local youth football league recover after the storm caused what they call significant damage to the Jessamine County youth football field, which does operate as a nonprofit organization. Officials say damage at the field could cost up to $30,000. Thankfully, emergency management officials say no injuries were reported in Jessamine County. At the live desk, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Well, storms also caused some problems in Anderson County, knocking down trees and damaging buildings. Winds ripped off part of the roof of the Abundant Life Christian Center. One man says he and his grandson had quite the close call when a piece of that roof came flying towards them. I did not know that anything was happening until it was right there. And the, all I could do was just duck. I'm a little shaken, but I'm very grateful that I'm doing okay. Grandson is doing the same. Thankfully, no injuries were reported from that storm. And in Scott County, investigators think wet roads are to blame for a crash that injured six people, including some children. This happened yesterday afternoon in the northbound lanes of Interstate 75. That's near the Sadieville exit. Police say the driver of a minivan hydroplaned, causing the vehicle to run off the road and hit a tree. At last check, two of the people injured were in critical condition at UK Hospital. When we are not on the air, you can always follow the latest forecasts and weather information on our website, WKYT.com. You can also download our weather app to your smartphone or tablet. New this morning, two families have been displaced after an overnight fire. This started just after 3 o'clock this morning in a duplex on Olympia Road off Armstrong Mill. WKYT's Victor Puente is live from the scene. Just how many people, Victor, are now without a home because of that fire? Good morning, Rebecca. There are 11 people living in that duplex. Everyone made it out safely. You can see a big fire response still going on out here behind me. Firefighters tell me they had some trouble reaching those flames. Now, the woman who lives on the left side of that duplex tells me her neighbor knocked on her door around 315 saying there was a fire. She was able to get her four young grandchildren out. The people living on that side, where the, on the side where the fire started, also made it out safely. Well, firefighters tell us they believe this fire started in a kitchen where some food was left unattended. The fire eventually spread to the attic, and firefighters had a tough time getting to it. They had to cut through the roof of the building to get to those flames. And once they thought they had it under control, they had a few flare-ups to deal with. 
Firefighters say the small attic space made it tough to fight this fire. Another obstacle they had to deal with was the overnight heat and humidity. It wears crews out. Uh, as you can see, this gear is very thick, very hot, and you know we're we're breathing off air bottles, and you you sweat, but it doesn't evaporate and cool you. You know the humidity just, it wears you down pretty quick. The intersection of Olympia and Center Parkway behind me is blocked by fire trucks. The major out here tells me it will be blocked throughout most of the morning as they continue to do overhaul, looking for hot spots, making sure this fire is extinguished. Live in Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Quite a mess there. Thanks so much, Victor. All lanes of Man of War are back open this morning after an overnight crash. Police tell us a driver fell asleep behind the wheel around 2.30. That's when they crashed through a fence and hit a gas line. The right lane of the inner loop was closed but has been reopened. Fortunately, the driver and passenger are all right. Officers tell us no one lost power. Columbia Gas did have to shut off the gas leak. Well, we are learning more about the victims senselessly slaughtered inside a Charleston church. Six women and three men were violently killed at a Bible study. Among them, three pastors, a high school track coach, a librarian, and a 70-year-old custodian at the church. Brian Webb reports. Holy. Prayer vigils across the country in places like Dallas, Cleveland, and Detroit honored the nine lives lost after a shooting inside the historic Emanuel AME Church. Detroit Pastor Andre Spivey is a former colleague and friend of Pastor and State Senator Clemente Pinckney, killed during the Bible study Wednesday night. He was 41 years old. Of course, I'm angry that he did it, uh, but, my, but my, the Bible that I use teaches us to love and not hate. The youngest victim, 26-year-old Tywanza Sanders, recently graduated college with a business degree. The oldest, 87-year-old Susie Jackson, sang in the church choir. 59-year-old Myra Thompson was a longtime church member in charge of the chapel. And 45-year-old Sharonda Coleman Singleton, a speech therapist and a beloved high school track coach. She's in the arms of Jesus. I know that. Her son is a baseball player at Charleston Southern University. We are mourning right now, but I know we'll get through it. Uh, my mom was a God-fearing woman. 49-year-old mother of four, DePayne Middleton Doctor, worked at a local university. 74-year-old Daniel Simmons Sr. survived the shooting, only to die at the hospital. And 54-year-old Cynthia Hurd was a librarian for more than 30 years. Brian Webb for CBS News, New York. Just awful. Hearing the stories of all those victims really hits it home. Well, local authorities say three people survived the shooting. One survivor, Felicia Sanders, says she played dead as she lay on top of her granddaughter to protect her. Well, Lexington also held vigils yesterday to allow folks here to meet and mourn together the loss of those nine victims. First, Quinn Chapel hosted an afternoon vigil. Later on that evening, St. Paul AME Church hosted a prayer vigil and invited the community to pay tribute to those killed in the shooting. A congregation that held its doors open for the stranger has been betrayed. And as we stand across this connection on this day, don't let this be the only time that we stand together. Well, after prayers were said for the victims, their families, the city of Charleston and the Emanuel Society, a prayer was said for the suspected gunman as well. Well, investigators are still trying to figure out what caused a fire that caused damage to a Lexington home. The fire started just after 6 last night at a mobile home on Hanson Circle near Price Road. Lexington firefighters say a neighbor saw smoke and called for help. Firefighters say it didn't take them too long to put out the fire, but the home has quite a bit of damage. No one was injured. A horrific discovery for a child in Metcalf County. Police say she found her mother dead and her father badly injured from gunshot wounds in their home. Police say Daniel Tiller shot his wife, Jessica, Tuesday night, then turned the gun on himself. They say one of the couple's children later saw what happened and called 911. Daniel Tiller died at a hospital Wednesday night. Jessica's sister says there was a history of abuse in that home. There are a lot of things I didn't know because she was afraid to tell it. And I want people out there to know that, to try to let somebody know what's going on in the home so that somebody might could help you. Very, very sad. Police say they're still trying to figure out what led to the shooting. 
Well, police say they have caught the serial bank robber known as the Sock Hat Bandit. They say Brian Parnell of Dayton, Ohio, admitted to robbing nine banks after being arrested in Kenton County yesterday. Police say he led them on a chase after a robbery at a bank in Independence. They arrested Parnell after he crashed near an elementary school. Parnell is suspected of robbing banks in Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana over the past few months. Community leaders and health officials will meet later today to discuss the location of a possible needle exchange clinic in Lexington. That meeting will take place at the Plantory on West 6th Street today at 11. The Fayette County Health Department will be there heading up the meeting. The program would be at the Health Department building on Newtown Pike. They would offer testing, needle disposal, and would provide clean needles. 541 is the time this morning. Hope you're having a great start to your Friday. Let's check out traffic, see what is happening on our Waze map. Not too much to look at right now. We're not seeing any obstacles to slow down your morning commute other than rain, which is causing some slick spots on the roads. Make sure you leave maybe a little bit earlier than you normally would or just don't travel at all if you don't really have to get out today. Still a whole lot more to come this morning, including this story, texting while walking. Maybe you've done it, maybe you haven't, I don't know. Maybe you bumped into someone if you have. There's a university in Utah now trying to combat that problem. Hmm. We'll have more coming up in five minutes. Interesting story to see. Another interesting thing, a lot of this rain and also that tropical system making its way to the state of Kentucky. That's fairly rare. I'll explain those details coming up next.